Welcome to Grant Writing Simplified with Teresa Huff. If you're a freelance grant writer, an aspiring grant writer, or wondering if a career in grant writing is right for you, you're in the right place. For more great resources on grant writing, head over to TeresaHuff.com. But before you do, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the great videos to come. Welcome to the Grant Writing Simplified Podcast. This is the place to learn how to make a big impact in your community through grant writing and nonprofit consulting. The world needs you to step forward as a grant writer and use your skills to lead with confidence. I'm Teresa Huff, former special ed teacher turned grant writer and nonprofit strategist. In my 20 years of freelancing, I've helped nonprofits triple their funding and exponentially increase their reach. Now I'm stepping up to mentor freelancers and nonprofit leaders like you who are ready to take your skills to the next level. It's time to get intentional about your vision so you can create lasting change in your community. Learn the skills and strategies you need to become the grant writer the world needs. Let's do this. Hey friends, I have got a fun episode today. But first, if you are trying to break into grant writing, I want to invite you to join me in the Fast Track to Grant Writer VIP program. I'm rolling out some amazing new features this fall and incorporating some real world practice experience to help you gain traction and build your successful grant writing career. You can even choose to earn a digital certificate or university credit. Sign up and start learning today at teresahuff.com slash VIP. Today, I am talking with a really fun friend of mine. As a little girl, I remember when I first heard about the Harlem Globetrotters, and I even got to see them in person a couple of times, and I thought they were the coolest thing ever. (laughs) And I still do. They are just full of joy and fun to watch. Now, even though I'm not so coordinated and not much of a basketball player myself, I can appreciate the skill and conditioning that it takes to play the sport. Then you throw in some fancy moves and a little bit of entertainment and personality like the Harlem Globetrotters, and you've got yourself a court full of magic. It's pretty cool to watch. That's why I was super excited to make a new friend who is a former Globetrotter, And not only that, but he has made it his life's work to spread a message that we all need to hear, that kindness is free. He has even made this into a nonprofit to spread this message around the world, which is a pretty tremendous thing to do. And once you meet him, you'll see that he is doing this from the heart because he cares so much about spreading this kindness to everyone everywhere he goes. Today, I am talking with Herbert Flighttime Lang. Herb is the founder of the Kindness is Free Foundation, and he does. He spreads joy and kindness wherever he goes. Herb and I chat today about the importance of mentorship, of community, and choosing kindness. As a newer nonprofit, Herb addresses the importance of identifying practical steps to meet your big goals, and as a former athlete, he, invi- he advises us to apply the discipline of being consistent in whatever we do. This is a really fun episode. Here we go, and I hope you enjoy. Herb, welcome to the show. I am so excited to talk with you again, and I'm excited to introduce everyone to my new friend and Harlem Globetrotter. Tell us a random fact about yourself. Oh, man, a random fact. Thank you so much, Teresa, for uh, taking time out to allow me to be on your platform. Uh, you are a example of what kindness is free is all about. Um, and so, thank again, you. thank you. Thank you so much uh, to everybody who's listening as well. A uh, random fact about myself. Well, I grew up in a small town in Arkansas, and I actually grew up, well, I wouldn't say grew up, but from the time that I was uh, eighth grader, uh, up until all the way through college, I worked on a fish farm. My mother married a uh, married a fish farmer, so I, they're actually still married to this day. He's my stepfather, and uh-huh. I've been in the fishing business, so to speak, for a good portion of my life. Wow. When I think of farming, fish farm is not the first thing that comes to mind, so that's pretty unique. Right. 
Right. Yeah. So, I mean, my my uh, father in Brinkley, Arkansas, my stepfather, he's one of the only African-American fish farmers probably in the, in the country and all types of fish, koi, goldfish, things like that. They used to raise a lot of catfish. And my mom actually used to run a fish farm in, in my hometown. So, yeah, that's probably a fact that people didn't didn't know. I know a little bit about fish farming. How cool. What a fun, random, unique skill. I love that. Yeah. I well, mean, hey, it's something that I've, I'm still able to use to this day because where I live at now in Florida, I have the skills to, you know, to fish, not necessarily raise fish, but mm-hmm. growing up in that environment, I know how to handle fish and I know how to cook fish, cut fish. And so, yeah, I'm grateful. And always when we go back to my hometown, we've always got, got some good, some good fish to eat. Ah, nice. Very cool. Well, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got where you are today, because I know your journey has had a lot of different and vast steps along the way. So fill us in a little bit. Well, yeah, Teresa, I mean, I would say for myself, I've been able to you know, live an extremely unique life. Uh, <laughs> That's an understatement. Helped me get to where I uh, a lot of kindness has helped me get to to where I am. I mean, pretty much kindness all the way through. But uh, growing up, and I was born in an Arkansas called Brinkley, Eastern Arkansas. It's a town that sits right between Little Rock, uh, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee. And my mom had me at the age of seventeen. And uh, by the time she was twenty five years old, she had she had uh, six of us. And things wow. weren't easy. We grew up in I lived in the projects in, in my town until I was. Uh, I think it was eight or nine years old when we moved into a, a new home on the other side of town. This small, I had a lot of aunts and uncles and family members in that community. My grandparents were around there, so a lot of people were able to to uh, have an impact as far as the way that I was raised and the things that I would get myself into. And that was, you know, it kind of leapfrogged me into some of the success I was able to have. I remember the first time meeting my high school basketball coach. And I say high school because he was my coach from seventh all the way through 12th grade. And even to a certain extent, still the inspiration and the coach to me. But he was the person that instilled in me really the importance of education as well as the uh, possibilities that I had with athletics. And uh, it didn't hurt that his, his son Marlon was in the same grade as myself and had become one of my best friends. So we were able to spend a lot of time together and not really growing up with my father right there next to me, having someone like him from all the way through seventh grade, all the way through graduating was a a major, major impact on my life, which led to me uh, graduating uh, with the, uh, with honors. I graduated National Honor Society. I was president of my high school graduating class along with earning a basketball scholarship. So, you know, you can just see from, from those experiences and what I was able to accomplish even in those younger years, Thanks to people in my community, thanks to my coach, thanks to my parents and my stepfather and all the people who had their hand in developing the human that I, you know, eventually, you know, have become. And that led to me going to college, Uh, I played college basketball at Centenary College, which is located in Shreveport, Louisiana. Shreveport is a uh, one of the largest cities in Louisiana in northwest Arkansas. And I played college basketball there from 1994 through 98. It was an amazing, amazing experience. And for me. One of the uh, one of the cool things was the diversity uh, growing up in Arkansas where I grew up at. There wasn't a lot of diversity and being able to go to college. I was able to intermingle and mix with people from different countries, people from France and Belgium and South America and people from Canada, Australia. It was just fascinating to me to actually meet people who really had truly different life life experiences than myself. And then just realizing that, you know, we have a lot in common, even though we grew up you know, in different parts of the world and even just being fascinated with some of them growing up in different countries and being able to speak English so well. Here I am, you know, I've taken French in high school, but didn't get the most out of it. So it actually kind of led to me taking French for another year in high school, which helped because after winning the dollar, the college Sam Dunk contest um, at the Final Four in, in San Antonio, Texas, about a year later, I was able to gl- uh, join the Harlem Globe Charters, which led to... 18 years of traveling all around the world, meeting so many amazing, you know, people having a chance to do a reality show, The Amazing Race, three times on CBS, having a chance, you know, to meet uh, President Obama while he was serving in the White House at two of the annual 
Easter egg rolls. I mean, these are things I could not have imagined, you know, growing up in a small town, Arkansas, having an opportunity to not only meet Pope Francis at the Vatican back in 2015, but being designated as the person who would be spinning the basketball on Pope Francis' finger. So, I mean, what a wow. what a life I was able, you know, to live and that I continue to live. And, you know, what I took from that, that experience is that I was shown the world for a reason and I was taken care of for a reason. And part of my reason is the kindness that was shown to me, you know, the importance of kindness and the impact that it can have on people. Because I know that those 18 years of traveling to almost 90 countries around the world, the smiles I was able to look into people's faces and see and the kids, that's what my purpose still is. You know, maybe it's not with the globe charts, but that's still what I get to do. And I get to go around the world and say thank you, you know, to these people who helped me get to these, you know, to this mindset to where I am right now, where I get to go out and I speak to businesses and and groups of young people and you know just having opportunities to act and, and and write books and tell my story and then inspire people through these actions i mean this is this is what it's all about this is the life that i know that was chosen for me this is the life that i get to live and i get to show others that you know the same thing is possible through them and for them when they treat people uh with kindness they get to be a part of the journey uh you know that to inspire all kinds of people around the world not just in their community what a beautiful perspective. I love how you have chosen to give back. And we've talked a lot on the show about mentors and the importance of mentors, whether it's in your nonprofit, your business, your journey personally. And so it sounds like for you, that has been a huge key to furthering your career, your personal outlook on life, your success. And now I love that it's come full circle and you are giving back and spreading that mentoring to others, whether you are deliberately intending to or not, that's what you've become. And one thing I've learned is that a lot of people that I have <clears throat> excuse me, followed over the years have become mentors from afar. They may not ever even know it. I may never meet them, but I still consider them a mentor. And you are positioned in such a way that you can do that for people all over the world. And that's incredible. Teresa, when I think about, you know, mentorship, and I mentioned a little bit earlier about my high school basketball coach, his name is Herbert Williams. And we actually still have a connection, you know, to this day, he just recently had a birthday. I think he turned 79. Mm. Don't quote me on that. But coach Williams and I through text messaging, even now we communicate several times a week. And this is a relationship a friendship that started when I was 12 years old, you know, so this is over 30 years of a connection. And I know, you know, he, he coached and he taught high school for almost 40 years mm -hmm. and he had a chance to, you know, be a part of my journey. He had a chance to be an influence and he continues to be. And I know every time I get a chance to speak to him and I get a chance to go back to my community and, and see him, he's excited. He mm -hmm. knows that he's had an impact on the world. So that's, the same feeling that I want to be able to give, you know, people who are, you know, coming, coming that encounter with myself. I mean, even my former teammates uh, in high school and, and, you know, in college, even with the Globe Charters, I started a Facebook group for all the former Globe Charter employees because I know that it's important to have support as we transition through different parts of our lives. And, you know, this was something that was started before COVID. It was 2019. I decided, man, we need to get a Facebook group up, you know, just so we can connect with one another. And, we started out with about 60 people. And once COVID came in, we ended up with over 200 people in that Facebook group. And probably for a good three to four months, we had 15 to 20, sometimes 30 people meeting twice a week on this group, just supporting one another and realizing how much we missed each other. You know, what value that we still have with each other and things that we could do to actually work together moving forward. So, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, we all go through different struggles in our life, but it's important to be there to be able to you know, to support. And that's why it's important for me to bring people together. And that's what it's all about. I mean, to have a, a group of people, you know, even it, an organization, you know, that was a part of an organization, but separate within the group to know that they still have value and to let them know that they still have value is, is important as well. So that's a big part of, of why I do things like that. And the experiences that I've had with meeting former Globe Charter players, such as the late, great Curly Neal, you know, he would come out and 
he would, you know, he would say, are they taking care of you? Are they doing? Yeah. Yeah. Curly. Thank you. You know, he just wanted to make sure that what he did, you know, and what he wanted to continue to do is make sure that things were good for the generation that was coming after him. And that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that I've made an impact while I'm here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I have no doubt you already are in big ways. And, you know, the mentoring, and then you also touched on community and the importance of having that community support to lift you up, to help each other through those challenges. And I would dare say, if we had your mentor on the call right now, I bet he would say he has learned a lot from you over the years as well. And that's a beautiful relationship to have for such a long-term support system in your network. You're absolutely right. He, he definitely would say that because he he lets me know. He lets me know how proud he is of me, him and his wife, you know, to the both of them. I and mean, he even tells me that he loves me. And so I'm, I, I mean, it's just a beautiful connection. I mean, to know that he's impacted me and I also know that I'm impacting him right mm -hmm. now at this point in his life, being able to, with social media now being able to actually see the results of the products that he helped produce, which is, you know, someone like myself, as well as his, his son, as well as so many other people that have become successful because of people like himself and mm -hmm. other teachers and leaders in the communities. Right. And that speaks to the importance of seed planting. When you don't see the harvest, sometimes it takes years or decades to see a harvest, but planting those seeds is so important. And you are doing this in a big way now. So I would love for you to share more about your initiative and why you're doing this, which you've already kind of mm -hmm. shared a lot that explains why, but tell us more about that. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, um, I was able to write a book about a year and a half after getting the call from the Globe Trotters that my assignment was over with. And as I began to reflect on my career, when I would come off the road, oftentimes my friends and, and <clears throat> family would say, man, you should write a book with these amazing experiences that you you had. And that actually ended up coming full circle after going through a bit of, you know, some mental struggles, trying to figure out what was next after playing 18 years of doing the same, you know, amazing job and it, you know, it coming to an end. For me, writing a book was therapy. And by going back and writing that book, I was also able to realize how fortunate I was and how kind people were to me along the way. And that kind of, <clears throat> along with already my mindset, uh, if you ever went back into a Harlem Globetrotter program, my motto has always been patience and kindness. And just by being able to go back and, and write that book and read it and write it, you know, and read it, all the experiences were, were kind experiences that helped me get to different levels of success from my high school basketball scholarship to uh, being able to participate in the College Slam Dunk Contest and winning the dunk contest actually in 1998, to being able to have an opportunity to, to play for the Globe Tars. There were people that spoke up for me and put these ideas or, you know, that I never even really thought about, the kindness that they, it didn't cost them anything, you know. And then when I began to think about traveling around the world, all the different, you know, amusement parks and, you know, uh, arenas and nightclubs and, you know, all of these experiences that I had, I never got hurt. You know, anything could have happened, but I didn't. You know, people were kind to me at the end of the day. They just wanted to share a moment and hope that we could meet again and have this, you know, these same moments again. So I just realized that after a couple of years, you know, kindness is free. You know, it doesn't cost us anything uh, to be kind to people. And that's what it's all about when, when you talk about giving your you know, your time, you know, that's a way of, of, of being charitable. Your your wisdom, that's the way of, it doesn't always have to be a monetary thing, you know, just being able to share and uplift people. And I know that that's a gift uh, that I have and I it's something that I enjoy uh, doing. And that's when I started all of my initiatives. I started my own brand, Swag Ball, which is right mm -hmm. here. And this is the brand that actually uh, makes the, the shirts that I wear and follows my other initiative, which is Kindness is free, which is also the name of my uh, foundation, the Kindness is Free Foundation, which has been up and running for about eight months now. We haven't really got the things going full circle, but we've had a couple of, I've had a couple of events outside of the Kindness is Free Foundation that let me know how important it is, you know, to be able to do this. Last year, I was able to do uh, three basketball clinics, uh, one in my hometown I was able to do for free just from raising money within the community. It was a beautiful event that we had for four hours of basketball, more than basketball. We had 
you know, jump, jump uh, balloon things outside and just games for the young people in my community. And that just let me know how much I really needed to get, you know, the foundation up and going. Also, I'm getting ready to have my second annual kindness is free basketball clinic. It's not, not actually through my foundation, but if I get the foundation up and running, I'll be able to do more of these. But this is the second one I'm able to do right here in my community in Ruskin, Florida on September the 10th. And again, it's 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 exciting to be able to share the unique journey that I've had, you know, through my experiences, through kindness, which is my message. It's uh, even when I go to speak into to different communities, not communities or school businesses and schools, I partnered up with a company called Sign and created a kindness is free award. And this is I don't know if people can see this award. It's a plaque that I hand out. Uh, to the people, the person that's nominated and, and elected at whatever business event or school uh, that I speak at. And it's something that has nothing to do with popularity or grade grades that a kid makes in high school or elementary school. It's just about being a good human being because good human beings have helped me get to where I am today. I mean, it's, it's funny. I just got a, a message on Facebook from a, a, a kid that I knew since probably 10 years old, his mother and I, my mom used to work together and he just reached out after who knows how many years asking if I remembered him. And of course, I remembered him and just wanted to say, man, congratulations on what you're doing. I'm proud of you. I'm glad that I know you, you know, I'll call, you know, I'm glad to be able to call you my brother. And that's just an example, an example of that makes me feel great. That lets me know that I am doing things the right way when somebody's watching from a distance and they randomly just want to say, man, I appreciate you. I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I know him. You know, I appreciate him uplifting me like that. I appreciate the experiences that we had when I was younger because I haven't forgotten them, but you know, that's what it's all about. It's about creating experiences. And that's what I learned with the globe charters with traveling to so many different countries around the world. Again, having a chance to compete on the major race three times, you know, do shows, uh, like the price is right. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Cupcake Wars, all these opportunities that I had came through kindness and people believing in me. And so, you know, that's that's what it's all about, you know, at the end of the day, creating experiences. And I know through the foundations and, you know, the nonprofits and charities that I can create more experiences for people and let them see an example, which is me, a living witness that kindness truly is free. You know, the thing that jumps out at me is that you chose kindness first. And then these other things have been happening. You've been getting the feedback. You've heard from the young man that it helped, but you chose kindness first and you didn't do it with the motive of, I want accolades. I want people to cheer me on. You did it because you wanted to give back and you had that giving heart to spread the kindness. And now these other blessings are coming back to you because of it, but that wasn't your motive. Your motive was not, truly not, the kindness. Not at all. And I'll give you another example while we're doing that. So just earlier this year in April, uh, before I was able to do my first TED talk, I got a phone call from one of my Globe Charter teammates. We played together for like 10 years. Uh, his name is Kevin Daly. Kevin Daly and I you know, hadn't played together in almost 10 years, nine, eight years, at least eight years. And so he had gotten a role in a movie called Sweetwater, which is going to be a major motion picture, uh, Clint Eastwood production. Uh, he had gotten a role of Goose Tatum eight years ago. And finally, the movie got greenlit. They okayed it to be produced. And he gave me a phone call saying that, you know, they had already picked five other positions, himself and five other, uh, four other spots had been filled. Uh, for the Globe Charter roles in the movie, which were going to be major roles because it's about a former Globe Charter, Nate Sweetwater Clifton, but he wanted to bring in another actual real Globe Charter teammate besides himself that has actually played and experienced what it was like. So he chose me, you know, and he said that he chose me because he knew that I could relate to guys. He knew my way of being. He's been watching me train and work out through social media. He's known that I'm, you know, he can count on me. And that's, again, that's relationship that was, you know, 15, you know, 20 years ago, Teresa, that through the kindness, I was the person that he thought of. And, you know, when things come up, I think of certain people and that's what it's all about. It wasn't me thinking, oh man, 15 years ago, I better be nice to Kevin because when that <laughs> movie deal comes up in 2022, I want to be ready for it. No, I care right. about Kevin. I care about all the people that I encounter. And, you know, you should be kind to people, not for the fact that you think that they can do something 
for you down the road, but just for the fact that it's going to make you feel good inside, like the message that I got on Facebook earlier. That's a great example. Kindness, ki kindness is truly free. Yes. And that just speaks to the importance of doing the right thing because it's the right thing, whether it's integrity, kindness, faithfulness in your work, giving back to the community. And you also mentioned, you touched on this, there are so many ways to give back. Yes, financially, but also of your time, pouring in your energy and talents to nonprofits, to organizations doing good work, how can you get back? And it doesn't have to be huge things. It can be small things along the way. But again, you're planting those seeds and that's so important. And I love that now you have taken this and you're harnessing it into your foundation initiative. And we'll work together on some plans and next steps for you to get that up and running and get the momentum going. But you've already got a fantastic start with it. And you're doing all the right pieces to begin with, to get it off the ground, to start making a difference now ahead of time. And then as your foundation grows, you can leverage those workshops, those those things you've done already with mm -hmm. students that impact you're making. Mm -hmm. And that will make your foundation and your nonprofit work so much stronger because of that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, definitely I've I've had some great examples. I have a couple of teammates that have a couple uh foundation, one of them is up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, that ha handles foundation i'm proud of that guy he just recently had a free basketball clinic in his hometown you know for a bunch of kids and it was through his foundation i have another teammate that has a dare to dream foundation he actually has basketball exhibition games where he raises money so you know there's people out there that are, that are doing it i've had you know some great examples and just really excited to take it to another level and really get it up and running and make a difference in the world because you know i'm a person of the world i consider myself a, a world citizen and it's important that <laughs> you know, for me to leave an impact on the world that has been shown to me that I've seen with my eyes, you know, and put my feet down and in, in, into the dirt, into the sand, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And you're able to relate to people it, so much better because you have seen their communities, you've seen their lives, how they live, where they live, the beauty of all these locations, the struggles, the the joy on their faces that you bring to them, you've seen it all over. And so that's an incredible perspective to bring to the table. It absolutely is. I mean, having a chance to travel to almost 90 countries around the world. I mean, I think I'm at 88, I keep saying <laughs> almost, but just having a chance to travel to so many different places again, not only just one or two times, but a lot of these countries and cities that I've been to, I still have friends and, and connections. And, you know, it's it's just important to, to realize that. And I think that we, I think that, Teresa, I think that we know now even more than we probably ever had at any point in our generation that through what happened through COVID, that we are connected. You know, it's important that you do care about the person that's, that's next to you, in front of you, behind you, because life can change with, you know, with just as it did in 2020. You know, this is, yes. 2020 is probably a big reason why you and I are able to sit here right now and do this, this podcast. You know, right. things change and we have to be able to adjust and we have to be able to respect one another's opinions and ideas but realize at the end of the day, we have to all live in this world. We get to live in this world and we get to take care of each other while we're here. Yes. And while the pandemic was a struggle and a huge challenge for all of us, a mm -hmm. lot of good also came out of it. And we can use some of those struggles and hurdles to actually be even better than before. And like you said, things like this, we can connect in ways we couldn't have, or maybe wouldn't have thought to. And it's become a very useful thing to ignite and propel us into even better steps and initiatives going forward. I love it. I mean, I'm sure that there's people probably looking back now, like myself sometimes, like, man, I remember when I was doing this during COVID. I was connecting with this person, you know, a lot more. I had time for that person. I was hanging out with my family a little bit more. We were playing games, but at the same time, this is us living into the, in the future. When I was a kid, I envisioned being able to look at the person as I was speaking to them, like the Jetsons, and to be able to actually experience this now and actually being able to connect and actually a meaningful conversation and move the needle through the communication that we have I mean, kindness is free. How how kind is this world to us? <laughs> yes. And a lot of it is how you choose to look at it. We can decide 
We can decide to look for the negative and hold on to the bad things, or we can decide to let those make us help us grow and make us better and to choose the kindness and to choose the better perspective and to make the world a better place. It's it's all about choices. And, you know, for me, it again takes me back to my younger days and, and making choices. I had a group of friends who we all, I think it was probably ninth grade. We were friends since seventh grade, but really our freshman years, we made a choice that we were going to go to college. We were going to make the grades that we needed to make to go to college. And as a result of that, that group of friends that I grew up and hung out with, six of us ended up getting scholarships to go to college in sports when it was all said and done, but also academically graduated with honors. You are who you surround yourself with. If you want to surround yourself with people who want to complain and nag all day, then that's what you're going to be around. If you're around, you want to be around people who want to talk politics all day, if that's your niche, then that's what you get to do. But if you want to, you know, be live peaceful and be around peaceful who people who think in that mindset, but also have envisions of making the world a better place through actions and, and giving, then, hey, eventually you'll work your way to that sector as well. But it's yes. all it's also it's a choice. It's what you choose to do when you wake up each and every day, who you get to be. You have a choice. Again, the power of community. And we have the ability now, like never before, to seek out the community that we want to become and we can find them. If it's not in our immediate personal circles, we can still reach out and connect and find people in ways we never could have even just five years ago. I, I, um, <clears throat> when I stopped playing with the Globe Charters, I ended up moving out to California. Before then, I had lived in Shreveport, Louisiana for 23 years, Teresa. And probably the first couple of months after getting that call, I will tell you, I'm a health and physica physical education major. That's what my degree is in. I've always been pretty physically fit. And my usual basketball playing weight with the Globe Charters was probably about 205 to 210 pounds. Probably within a couple of months of, of getting that phone call, I, got up to about 225 pounds and this wasn't a good look for me even as a personal trainer i was not physically active but just relocating to a new environment i ended up moving out to california california nothing against louisiana great food but california is a little bit more health conscious when it comes to the food and even the restaurants and so just by even relocating and changing my habits up as far as eating and walking more and hiking and taking up new activities I've been able to transform up. I live in Florida now most of the year, but I've been able to transform into the importance of realizing that health and physical education that I actually studied and majored in. I surrounded myself with people who were in that lifestyle, I already had the education and the knowledge and the physical background from playing professional sports. It's just a matter of, you know, kind of putting it all, you know, putting it all together. So mm -hmm. all of these things are, are important. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just a small change can help us get momentum towards the things we want to become. I had never looked at any types of diets or anything like that. And, you know, just starting to do the research, the momentum, and then seeing the results. The results of it are, are a big part of the momentum. You know, when you get up and you feel a little bit more flexible, you know, you feel a little bit more energy. That's something that, that keeps you going. You can realize, especially when you get older, you start to know when you're not treating your body the way that it should, that you should be. <laughs> it catches up <laughs> with us. And again, you're making an investment in the future, in, the, in this case, in your future self. Health is wealth. Yes. So tell us what are your next steps for your nonprofit and how you're going to grow this initiative? Well, the next stop, the, the next steps are really just um, really getting a, a website up and running. Um, we've got some other uh, portions of it and just getting, you know, up to the, the, the meetings and um, just really trying to <clears throat> figure out a way to, to make the most out of it. As far as like I have a T-shirt business, how to make it a, a profitable business as well. But just reaching out to I mean, I'm I have I love speaking in, in front of audiences of people but this is how i make my living as a motivational speaker i am a person who just last week i went to 20 schools in my community to see about possibly going in and speaking on you know the importance of kindness and kindness is free but the way one, a few of the ways that i really see it see it growing is i would like to be able to do retreats you know where we could have enough money to bring 
young people in to, you know, have different retreats and uh, being able to have experiences in, in sports and uh, educational, going to places like NASA and just having these different experiences. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. When you sit down and talk to people, people are going to tell you about experiences. When I tell people about me playing for the Globe Charters and having played for the Globe Charters, one of the first things I get, oh, I remember when, when I was, you know, 10 years old in 1981 in Madison Square Garden. So it's about experiences. And that's what I want to create through my nonprofit. I mean, even one of the visions with the, the visions that I have with the house that I built here was to be able to train kids and maybe have retreats. And I've been able to now I have three or four kids that I actually train in my garage, which is a uh, transformed into a, a basketball <laughs> gym. So it's about Not the surprising. vision and creating. Right. It's about the vision and creating. And mm -hmm. a few of those kids came from my Kindness is Free Basketball Clinic last year, which is about to happen again. So I just want to continue to grow in, in, in that way, just be able to create opportunities and experiences, not only for uh, young people, but fa for families as well. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I wanted to evolve to world world experiences because that's what I've seen. And the world is connected more than ever right now through social media, through Zoom and through our telephones. Sure. And, you know, the thing I noticed about your answer there for your next steps. You're incorporating some very immediate practical next steps, but you also have a big vision and some big goals that you ha can strive for. You can, you can get people excited and on board with, and then you can also work backwards to continue those short-term steps towards the goals. Yeah, you're not there yet, but you certainly know where you want to go and where you want to take this. And there'll be new opportunities along the way that you could never expect, kind of like the things we've talked about today. So it's a great way to keep moving forward. And I love that you're a newer nonprofit coming on the show because I want people to hear the perspectives of the new stages and also the later established nonprofits. I love having this mix because you are already doing the work. You have a clear vision, which is so critical. And now you're also taking steps towards that vision and you're being consistent and you're sticking with your core value of kindness is free. And that's informing every decision you make, every activity you do, every piece of the program you're building. It's it's important to uh, to be consistent. And that's something that I learned through, you know, just through being an athlete, being consistent, being on time, being respectful. And, you know, it's that's about kindness when you can respect people you know, time, value their time. It's important. You know, it's, it's, it's what, it's what, it's the essence of everything. And I think that kindness is what essentially is, you know, it is changing the world. And that's what the kindness is free organization is all about. The foundation it's about creating these experiences, but also me being able to get up in front of people who look like me, but also don't look like me, but being able to let them know that I come from, you know, small town, Arkansas. I was on welfare, I food stamps. I grew up around rats and roaches, but that transformed into, you know, me meeting the president, that meeting me, uh, the Pope. And there was a lot of people along the way that didn't look like me. There was Asians, there was white people, there were black people, there were Indian people that have all helped me. You know, there were people from, you're, there were people that have helped me along the way and we're still connected. And as long as they see that I'm doing well, they feel like they're having an impact on the world as well. And that's what we get to do through when we start, you know, funding and helping out different foundations. Some of us may not know how we want to help but once we get behind something that's meaningful it also helps us realize that yeah we are living a meaningful and impactful life yes and i love that you are taking that perspective and using that as fuel to move forward so i know people want to know how they can connect with you online to learn more to get merch whatever the case may be how can they find out more about you well, I'm pretty active on uh, social media, Teresa. You can also find me on LinkedIn under Herbert Lang or the Motivational Speaker. That's where I conduct a lot of business. But I do a lot of postings on uh, on Instagram, uh, Instagram and Twitter. I am at D A Trotter, the number four. That's at D A T R O T T E R four. That's on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find me on there probably posting several days a week. Uh, me walking and probably putting some exciting. Uh, uplifting song up kindness is free is also typically my quote of the day but just trying to figure out a way to use the social media even to impact people you know showing people some of my workouts that I do to make sure that I'm you know physically fit every day but uh, yeah you can find me on Instagram I also have a website herblang.com just 
just feel free to reach out to me as if you're reaching out to your to your son or your daughter on their text message. Send me a message and I'll be able to hopefully respond to you as soon as I can. We got the merchandise. As you mentioned, if you uh, envision having a T-shirt, tell me what size. I'll pick out the color and we'll make it happen. Nice. All right. And I encourage people to connect because it is infectious and your kindness and your energy and joy is contagious. And so it'll make people's day. Well, as well, we wrap I appreciate up. appreciate that. Oh, yay. Do it. Do it. <laughs> she said, do it. Do it. <laughs> I was going to ask. Oh, I got you. <laughs> yay. There you Love go. It. And I'm sitting down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. If we could see you on the court. Wow. Maybe we should take oh. a walk to the garage. <laughs> <laughs> so as we wrap up, tell us a resource that has been especially meaningful to you along your journey. I mean, you may, some people may find this shocking, but along my journey, I would probably say a couple of resources besides books, Google and YouTube. I mean, even writing writing my book, how to write a book, I de definitely went all the way through the basics of how to write a book using Google. And as far as YouTube, since I've retired from the Globe Trials in 2017, I had to pick up some new daily habits. Um, and YouTube helped me in the sense to where I got into meditation. And that's something that I had never really done in my life. And now, probably for the last three years, three or four years, I'm pretty consistent six, seven days a week, almost every morning, if not every morning, probably seven days a week. I'm meditating at some point during the day, usually in the morning for at least 10 minutes. And they're just random off of YouTube. But what I'm able to create through these meditations are the visions of things I want to create, not only for the day, but things I want to get done throughout the course of the day. And usually a lot of what I get accomplished through my days comes, you know, from my meditation. But through those meditations, I envision I'm having a good day. I'm going to reach out to this person or things I get to create. But the meditation on YouTube consistently has definitely helped me be able to create and, you know, help me evolve and create the days and life that I want to live. The time to just give ourselves space to think is so important. And we get busy and we're inundated with information, notifications, demands all day. So it's important to just set aside dedicated space for thinking and planning and ideas and creativity. Tell us the name of your book again. Uh, the name of my book is called Projects, Popes, and Presidents. Uh, this is the book right here. Um, it kind of tells the journey of my time growing up, it actually has a few pictures in there. That's my oh. high school basketball coach right there. Oh, fun. Uh, in the back. It's a, it's available on um, Amazon. And and Teresa also uh, co-authored another book uh, during COVID. It's called Cracking the Rich Code, Jim Rich Cracking the Rich Code, Volume 4. Okay. Uh, on there, you can see Tony Robbins, Kevin Harrington. But this is uh, about, I think it's 18 different authors from around the world. And in this chapter that I wrote, uh, my my chapter is called The Kindness Bridge to Wealth, and it has nothing to do uh, with money again. So like, I'm, I'm more than a, a basketball player. I'm, I'm an author. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm an actor. I'm a person that I know was put here to make a difference in the world and help people have experiences. And that's what I want to do. I want to make people when they come around me, I want to make sure that they feel good and know that they're being seen. And I think that if we all start to do that, you know, we're, we're off to really, really impacting the world. Go ahead. Yes. And again, your focus is not on what can I get, but what can I give? Because say it for us. Kind, kindness is free. <laughs> give it away with abundance, knowing that you will get it back with even more abundance and the world will be a better place as a result of it. Amen. All right. How'd you like that one for a fun change of pace and for a dose of energy and kindness? I mean, really, we all need to incorporate more kindness in our lives, right? And sometimes it starts with us. So I want to challenge you this week. Look for ways to drop kindness, maybe unexpectedly, maybe when it's undeserved, maybe when someone just looks like they could use a pick-me-up. Kindness is free. So what can you do to spread that around? 
and that will have a compounding effect, which is pretty amazing to see. So I would love to hear from you this week. As always, reach out on LinkedIn or on my website contact form and let me hear your thoughts. Let me hear how this is making a difference in your everyday work. If you are on the fence about becoming a grant writer, go take my quiz, Do You Have What It Takes to Be a Grant Writer? at teresahuff.com slash quiz. And say, if this was useful for you, would you leave me a review on iTunes? That will help other people find the show too, so that we can help even more nonprofits make a big impact on the world. All right, friends, have a great week and go change your world.